What a weekend at the Pagula Ice Arena this past Friday and Saturday. Penn State gave Hockey Valley a show on ice as they swept Wisconsin in a two-game series. But how did they do it? Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another edition of Penn State Sports Night. I'm Lexi Lideline, joined alongside Chris Lemo and Ethan Ellis. Tonight, we will look at the team series against the Wisconsin Badgers and what is the key for the Nittany Lions as a two-game series with the Buckeyes fast approaches. So, guys, let's start with Friday's game. 4-1 to one victory, breaking a four-game losing streak. So, Chris, I'll start with you. What did they do differently from previous games to secure this win? Well, really, they played disciplined and had good goaltending. I mean, for me, look, the last two series, I know that they didn't come away with wins against Notre Dame and Michigan, but they didn't play bad. They showed signs of development, and for a young team, that's the key. They just couldn't finish those games. I mean, in reality, they could have easily split with Michigan and Notre Dame, and this season looks a lot different because those are two very good teams. Now, this weekend, I, we finally saw the emergence of some young players that I've been waiting for. You know, we, we always know Kevin Wall. Obviously, he's been electric this year, and Connor McEachern. But now we have Ryan Kerwin. He absolutely exploded onto the scene. And there's a reason his name is pronounced Kerwin, because he is a winner, this kid. Okay, two goals on Friday, another two on Saturday. And he had the power play goal on Friday. That's been the big problem for this team, special teams. So to really be able to capitalize on that early in the series, get that power play goal, I think really set the tone. And then, of course, they had good goaltending. You know, I... I wasn't really expecting the split there. I thought Oscar would go Friday instead. But nonetheless, great goaltending. And really, they kind of had the jump from the start. I thought that, to be completely honest, I thought Jared Moe did look shaky and eventually did get pulled in that game. But they just looked like they had the energy and they looked like a confident team, which for a young team, confidence is key. You know, when you have veterans that have that kind of experience, been on a losing streak before, they know how to react. For a young team to be punched in the mouth like that, lose four games, especially the way that they did, and come out the way that they did against Wisconsin was huge. And it, again, it all revolves around those younger players. Yeah, I completely agree. It's really huge. They haven't won a series, a two-game series, since November of last year. So I'm really proud of them. All right, Ethan, now we're looking into the second game, an even bigger upset. Penn State wins 7-2. to two. So how did they go about this game? Yeah, I really look at two key aspects of this game. Like you mentioned, the freshmen showed out this weekend. Ryan Kerwin once again showed out in this game two goals. And then you also have the other freshman, Ben Schoen, who also scores two goals. It's really, it really shows that Penn State hockey has a bright future with how these players perform this weekend. And the other thing I really look at is the discipline of this team in this game. You know, you go in and you score seven goals. Wisconsin starts to get pretty mad, and they start be playing chippy. You saw fights upon fights, pushing and shoving in the last couple minutes of that game. But Penn State only comes away with one penalty from the entire game, and that just shows the discipline, which is really surprising, especially with a young team like Penn State, how they're able to keep their composure. They're able to just go in and get the job done. I I completely agree with that, and quite honestly, I think the big thing here, and I don't think that Guy Godowski gets enough credit, was that timeout in the third period. They Penn State was up 3-0, but then Wisconsin comes out, two quick goals to make it 3-2, and you're starting to think, oh no, this is another one of those games where a young Penn State team should have had it and blows it in the third period. He takes the timeout. Wisconsin then takes a stupid penalty, and they're on their way. Penn State absolutely exploded offensively. And once again, they used the special teams to do it. That was the key. But really, the way that they changed the momentum there in the third period with the timeout and on the power play, just great coaching by Guy Godowski. And it really, he got the reaction out of the team that was intended. I completely agree with the both of you saying that these players on the Penn State team are very young. You know, players like Ryan Kerwin, Ben Schoen, two really talented freshmen forwards that Guy Gadowski should definitely use in series to come like Notre Dame, Minnesota, Ohio State that he has in his arsenal. So moving on to Ohio State, got a big two game series coming up Friday and Saturday, 7 p.m. So Chris, I'll start with you. What does the team need to do to postpone a tough loss? 
Well, look, Ohio State is a very good team, and I've had some bad takes in my day. I mean, you can, I'm sure, go through this YouTube channel and probably find some. But probably one of my worst was that Ohio State was going to be near the basement of the Big Ten. And I really didn't expect that much out of this, out of this freshman group. I mean, to be completely honest, I kind of thought, okay, they've got a couple of seniors, but for the most part, they're young like Penn State. So I kind of thought they would be near the bottom. But this freshman class for Ohio State has been showing up and showing out. Georgie Merkulov has been one of the best players in the one of the best freshmen in the league. In fact, he leads all freshmen in the country in goal scoring with 14. And he's a completely different player since Penn State has seen him. I mean, I think he has 13 of his 14 goals since they saw him at the beginning of November. He's going to be the one that they want to have to watch because they can't let him get on a fast break or else he's going to make them pay. Now that and the goaltending, Jakob Dobish has been really good, the freshman in goal. In fact, he's been the best goalie in the Big Ten. So that freshman class has had not only those two producers, but also Cam Thiesing, another guy on that third line with Merkulov, has been really good as well. They're going to have to stop that third line. That's been their main scoring line. But overall, it's a very talented Ohio State group, and this is kind of the really the, the big test for this Nittany Lions team. Wisconsin was also young near the bottom of the standings in a rebuilding phase. This Ohio State team is red hot. So this is going to be a real test whether the Nittany Lions have turned a corner or not. Now, I know before this last, you know, this last series, I was on here and I was thinking, okay, maybe we'll see a split. Maybe they'll even get swept Penn State. I have more confidence in this team this weekend. I think they're going to get at least a split against Ohio State at home at Pagula. You know, it's really going to be a question of whether or not Ohio State can produce on these power plays. You know, they are 33rd in the nation in scoring on power plays, which isn't going to cut it in this game. If they want to succeed and sweep Penn State, they're going to have to get some scores off of power plays. And they're also going to have to figure out how to kill some penalties. You know, they are 40th in the nation when it comes to pe penalty kills. So. If they can't defend Penn State when Penn State's on a power play, and if they can't score when they're on a power play, they're not going to have a good game. They're not going to have a good series. But they do have hope, and that comes in the third period. Ohio State in the third period has outscored their opponents 43-14. to 14, And if they can keep that momentum going in the third period, if they can keep that stat line, then they could very well sweep Penn State. And that's why I think Ohio State will sweep Penn State. Well, Ohio State currently sits towards the top of the Big Ten rankings and Penn State sits towards the bottom. So I think this David and Goliath matchup will definitely fire the team up and give them something to look forward to. And hopefully they don't get swept like they got swept in the beginning of the season in Columbus. Well, that's all we have for this Penn State hockey edition of Penn State Sports Night. You can watch both games in the Penn State Ohio State series on BTN Plus at 7 p.m. this Friday and Saturday. For Chris Lemo and Ethan Ellis, I'm Lexi Lideline. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Thank you for watching this edition of Penn State Sports Night. If you're a fan of our content, please be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more clips. Also, follow us on Twitter at PSSN TV and on Instagram at PSU Sports Night to keep up with all the action. For all my colleagues, we are Penn State Sports Night.